Welcome to Mercurial Fitness. Did you know that the secret to faster muscle recovery might be hiding in your freezer, your playlist, or even your breathing pattern? Most people think recovery is just about protein shakes and sleep, but science has uncovered some seriously weird hacks that can supercharge your muscle repair in ways you really never imagined. Today, we're revealing five unconventional recovery methods that top athletes and biohackers swear by. Before we get into these game-changing hacks, let me ask you something. How often do you push through an intense workout only to feel completely destroyed for the next three days? You're sore, sluggish, and your performance drops like a rock. Meanwhile, you see other people in the gym who seem to bounce back overnight and hitting new PRs while you're still struggling to walk downstairs. The difference here isn't genetics or luck, it's knowledge. It's knowing these weird recovery hacks that most people have never even heard of. Here's the thing about recovery that most people don't understand. Your muscles don't actually grow in the gym. They grow during recovery. The speed and quality of that recovery depends on factors that go way beyond just eating protein and getting 8 hours of sleep. There are biological switches, neurological pathways, and psychological processes that most people never tap into. Today, we're going to show you exactly how to flip those switches. Our first muscle recovery hack is something called contrast temperature therapy, but not the way you think. Everyone knows about ice baths and hot saunas, but here's what nobody talks about. The magic happens in the transition zones. Recent research from the University of Sports Medicine shows that rapid temperature changes create a vascular pumping action that can increase nutrient delivery to damaged muscle tissue by up to 40%. But the optimal protocol isn't what you'd expect. Instead of spending 20 minutes in an ice bath, you want to alternate between hot and cold for very specific intervals. Start with 2 minutes in water as hot as you can safely tolerate, then immediately switch to cold water for exactly 30 seconds. Repeat this cycle 4 times, always ending on cold. The key is the rapid transition. Your blood vessels dilate and constrict like a pump, forcing fresh oxygenated blood into your muscles while flushing out metabolic waste products. The water temperature isn't the only factor here. The depth matters too. Full body immersion activates your vagus nerve, which triggers a cascade of recovery hormones, including growth hormone and insulin-like growth factor. This is why professional athletes spend thousands on specialized contrast therapy pools. But you can get the same effect in your own bathroom with a hot shower and a cold plunge, or even a bathtub filled with ice water. The second hack on our list involves something you probably do every day, but never thought could accelerate recovery. Music. But not just any music. Specific frequencies that literally rewire your nervous system for faster healing. This isn't new age nonsense. This is cutting edge neuroscience. Researchers at McGill University discovered that listening to music with a tempo between 60 to 70 beats per minute can increase protein synthesis by up to 25%. Here's why this works. Your autonomic nervous system has two modes. Sympathetic, which is your fight or flight response, and parasympathetic, which is your rest and digest mode. Most people are stuck in sympathetic mode, even during recovery. This keeps stress hormones like cortisol elevated, which literally blocks muscle repair. But specific musical frequencies can shift you into deep parasympathetic mode, where the real magic happens. The weird part is that it has to be instrumental music. Lyrics engage your language processing centers, which keeps your brain in an active state. Classical music, ambient soundscapes, or even specific binaural beats work best. Listen to it during your post-workout meal, while stretching, or right before bed. The effect is subtle, but measurable. Your heart rate variability improves, your sleep quality increases, and your muscle repairs faster. And yes, the volume matters. It needs to be loud enough to mask environmental noise, but quiet enough so that you could have a conversation over it. This creates what researchers call a sound cocoon that maximizes the parasympathetic response. Professional recovery clinics are now using sound therapy as a standard protocol, and the results are incredible. Our third hack is going to sound absolutely insane, but stick with me because the science is rock solid. Breathing through your nose while humming can increase nitric oxide production by up to 1500%. I bet you're doing it right now, aren't you? 
Nitric oxide is one of the most powerful vasodilators in your body. It opens up blood vessels, increases nutrient delivery, and accelerates the removal of metabolic waste from your muscles. Here's how it works. When you hum, you create vibrations in your sinuses that stimulate nitric oxide synthase, the enzyme responsible for producing nitric oxide. But it only works if you breathe through your nose. Mouth breathing doesn't create the same effect. The optimal protocol is 10 minutes of nasal breathing while humming at a low pitch, ideally right after your workout when your muscles are primed for nutrient uptake. Mm. Yeah, kinda sounds like I'm snoring. I know this sounds ridiculous, but elite athletes have been doing this for years. You'll see fighters humming in the corner between rounds, not because they're nervous, but because their coaches know it enhances recovery. The frequency doesn't matter as much as the consistency. You want a steady, low hum that you can maintain comfortably while breathing through your nose. The weird part is that this technique was actually discovered by accident. A researcher studying sleep apnea noticed that patients who snored, which I sounded like earlier, had higher levels of nitric oxide in their blood. This led to the discovery that any vibration in the upper airways can trigger nitric oxide production. Now it's being used in recovery protocols around the world. The fourth hack involves something called, oh God help me here, photobiomodulation, but you don't need expensive equipment to get the benefits. Red light therapy has been shown to increase cellular energy production by up to 40%, but here's what nobody talks about. Natural sunlight contains the same healing frequencies and the timing of exposure is everything. Most people think sun exposure is just vitamin D, but that's only part of the story. The red and near-infrared wavelengths in sunlight penetrate deep into muscle tissue and stimulate mitochondrial function. These are the powerhouses of your cells, and when they're working optimally, recovery happens at lightning speed. But here's the catch. You need to get this exposure within two hours of your workout, and it has to be direct sunlight, not through a window. The optimal protocol is 15 to 20 minutes of direct sunlight exposure on the muscles you just trained. If you worked chest and shoulders, expose your upper body. If you trained legs, expose your legs. Glass blocks the beneficial wavelengths, so outdoor exposure is essential. This is why outdoor workouts often lead to better recovery than indoor training. It's not just the fresh air, but it's also the light spectrum. But here's where it gets really weird. The angle of the sun matters. Morning and late afternoon sun have the highest concentration of red and near-infrared light. Midday sun is too intense and can actually increase inflammation. The sweet spot is the first two hours after sunrise or the last two before sunset. If you happen to live in an area with limited sunlight, you can replicate this effect with red light therapy devices, but they need to output at least 50 milliwatts per square centimeter to penetrate deep enough into muscle tissue. Most cheap devices don't meet this threshold, which is why many people think red light therapy doesn't work. It's not the concept, it's the execution. The fifth and final hack is the most bizarre, but also the most powerful. It's called eccentric overload cooling, and it combines two recovery principles in a way that amplifies both effects. Immediately after your workout, you're going to perform very slow, controlled movements of the exercises you just did, but with no weight and while applying cold to the target muscles. The science behind this is quite fascinating. During eccentric contractions, your muscles are lengthening under tension. This creates micro damage, which is what triggers the repair and growth process. But when you combine slow eccentric movements with cold application, you create a unique physiological response. The cold reduces inflammation and pain, while the movement promotes blood flow and nutrient delivery. It's like having the best of both worlds. Here's the protocol. Take the primary exercises from your workout and perform them with just your body weight, focusing on the lowering phase. If you did bench press, do slow push-ups focusing on the three second descent. If you did squats, do body weight squats with a five second lowering phase. While you're doing this, apply ice packs or cold gel packs to the muscles you're working. The key here is the timing. You want to do this within 15 minutes of finishing your workout when your muscles are still warm and blood flow is elevated. The cold application should be intermittent, not continuous. Apply cold for 30 seconds, remove for 30 seconds, and repeat throughout the movement session. This creates a pumping action that enhances the recovery effect. Professional athletes use pneumatic compression devices that combine cooling with mechanical compression, but you can get similar results with ice packs and focused movement. 
This technique was developed by physical therapists working with injured athletes. They noticed that patients who combined cold therapy with gentle movement recovered faster than those who used either treatment alone. Now, I know, I know what you're thinking. These hacks sound complicated, time consuming, and maybe even a little crazy. But here's the thing, you don't need to do all of them. Even implementing one or two of these techniques can dramatically improve your recovery time. The key here to all of them is consistency. Pick the hacks that fit your lifestyle and commit to them for at least two weeks. That's how long it takes to see measurable improvements in recovery markers. And if you just don't like them or can't stay consistent with them, move on to the next strategy. The beauty of these weird recovery hacks is that they work with your body's natural processes instead of against them. They're not about shortcuts or magic pills. They're about understanding the science of recovery and applying it in ways that most people never even think to try. When you combine these techniques with proper nutrition, adequate sleep, and smart training, the results can be absolutely transformative. Remember, recovery isn't passive. It's an active process that you can optimize and enhance. These five weird facts give you the tools that go way beyond the standard advice everyone else is following. While other people are stuck with average recovery times, you'll have the knowledge to bounce back faster, train harder, and achieve better results. If you enjoyed these recovery hacks, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more fitness content. Also, drop a comment below and let me know which of these five hacks you're most excited to try. I do read every comment and love hearing about your experiences with these unconventional methods. Recovery is where the real gains happen, and now you have the tools to make it happen faster than ever before. Until next time, train harder, recover harder, and keep pushing your limits.